So good morning on this ninth Sunday of the Pentecost season in the strangest year I've ever experienced in 82 years. But I'm glad you're here today and I'm glad you wore masks and gave your hands a dose of alcohol. And a little later we'll have a meal with another dose of alcohol. <laughs> and Lynn's going to remind you how we do that. Um, Dean, of course, has gone for the weekend uh, in order to complete the burial of his mother. And he'll be back in town and the office on Monday. And finally, the food pantry served 43 households Monday and appreciate that you bring paper bags. I remembered mine today, forgot them last night. Uh, the only other word is uh, from Oakwood in our shutdown mode. It's delightful to be out <laughs> and to be here today. And uh, I see my family occasionally outdoors. And our way of greeting one another is not to touch, but we hug ourselves and we throw the hug to everybody else. So Lakeview, it's my hug to you. <laughs> Your turn. My turn. Oh, okay. I think all of you have been here, but uh, just in case, for communion, you'll come up to the center aisle, take the, um, the bread and the wine, and finish drinking and eating, and throw it away, and then put on your mask before you go back to your chair, so you're not walking by people without your mask on. This side is certainly more populated. I don't want to say heavier, because I'm going to take offense. <laughs> Then that side, so if some of you want to, you know, go to that table, that's fine too. But just take your time, we're not in any rush, so that you can socially distance. Okay? Thanks. So I invite you to prepare for worship by listening to some music and getting in the mood. <laughs> Today is from Matthew chapter 13. 
five parables about the kingdom. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but when it is grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. Jesus told them other parables. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus asked, Have you understood all this? They answered, Yes. And he said to them, Therefore every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out his treasure, out of his treasure, what is new and what is old. This is the gospel of our Lord. It was early March this year when Carol and I were enjoying the heat and sunshine of Tucson, Arizona, and we're biking and hiking, each of those activities twice a week, and really relaxed. And then came the breaking news, COVID-19. Breaking news on television said because COVID-19 was spreading on the East Coast and the West Coast, the stores were having a run on the sale of hand wipes, sanitizers, toilet paper, eggs, and any packaged meat. You, you remember when that was starting to happen. I immediately turned to Carol and said, it is Costco run time. And so we did. And as we went from the front of the store toward the back where we usually start to shop, I looked in every cart that was going by us headed to the cash registers, and then I saw it. Hand wipes and sanitizer in the cart, and I stopped the man and I said, where did you get these? He pointed way at the back wall of the store, and you better hurry. There's not a lot left. So we did. And we got one of each. We put them in our cart. We picked up some other things and started out toward the checkout counters. And people start looking in my cart. And I just kept pointing to the back and saying, go to the back wall and hurry. I said to my wife, I feel like an evangelist today. But I'm not selling Jesus. I'm selling hand wipes and sanitizers. It was breaking news then. It's breaking news every day that has made our lives so different. And as I read these parables of the kingdom, I thought, that's breaking news. It was important breaking news because in Matthew's Gospel by chapter 13, people who love Jesus because he healed and fed people, start falling away because he said strange things like, it's going to cost you something to follow me, maybe even your life. It's going to cost mine. And so people started wandering off toward other people who promised food and healing. 
And so Jesus now turns to describe this kingdom. And the parables are those very ordinary things, mustard seed and yeast. But they have an extraordinary common meaning. And that's the purpose of the gospel this day, to announce that the kingdom isn't coming sometime in the future. But the kingdom is now. The kingdom is here. The kingdom is where Jesus is and where his followers are. So those parables help us remember not the images, but the truth of it. God's rule may be invisible to us, Jesus says, but God is at work just now, just as certain as the seeds you planted in the spring are now growing shrubs, maybe growing plants, maybe growing corn that's already eight feet tall in the fields, maybe even growing trees. God's rule may seem old-fashioned to some, young and old alike, but God's presence is as life-changing as yeast changes flour and water into life-giving bread. God's rule may be denied or ignored or abandoned, but it is still the only rule that offers the power of grace in our lives so much more valuable than gold or pearls that we may find or purchase. And God's kingdom is even more often claimed as our privilege. We Norwegians have got it. They're too bad about the rest of you. Or it's the Germans or the Czechs or the Italians or whoever else. We have assumed the kingdom belongs to an ethnic group. And most often to white ethnic groups. The kingdom of God. God's rule is as diverse as a net filled with good fish and bad fish. For God's rule and love are non-discriminating, all-inclusive. All are loved by God. Every person, that means even you and me. That's good news. So those were Jesus' images. How about some images that are a part of our life today? Let's start with the image of dinner. Uh, we're almost all eating dinner at home these days. No going out. So God's rule to me is being revealed as I remember my grocer who is spending inordinate hours every day and every night purchasing and putting on the shelves the materials I need to cook dinner at home. That's a powerful image. How about the image of soup? We're eating a lot of soup in our house and in summer, but with the air conditioning, who knows? So God's rule to me is revealed when a restaurant owner in Westchester County, New York, got all the restaurants who had staff working yet together, and they pledged to cook a million cups of soup and to distribute it to whoever needed it. And they did it in 50-gallon pots that they got from the brewery who didn't need them for the moment. That's a picture of God's rule in our lives today. Or the more ordinary one, bread. For me, God's rule is revealed when a stonemason looks out in his yard and sees that beautiful wood-fired oven he built, and he remembers that the stores are running out of bread now. And so he and his family are preparing a hundred loaves of bread every day and bagging them. And with the help of friends, they're delivered to the local fire department, the local hospital staff, and a line of cars who come in every day to get that love loaf. Sort of like the group who come up in your parking lot on Mondays to get bread for the week. And finally, my best picture 
of the kingdom of God working in our lives today is you and you and you and you and even me. God's rule is best pictured when others look at our lives, our daily lives, and they say, what wonderful work God is doing in our midst. That's the best picture of the kingdom. That's the best parable that fits the theme of the day. And it's breaking news because it reminds us that in Jesus Christ, we have everything we need for our daily life now and in the future. It's the reminder that the best parables of all are the people who listen to God and then take care of their neighbor. For that breaking news, I give thanks to God. Amen. Thank you, Nancy, for singing our hymn today. Make your presence known where weather conditions have impacted the lives of your people. Bring comfort to all who grieve, especially remember, we remember the Curse family this weekend. And give peaceful healing to all who are ill, including Sandy, Julie, Georgia, Mary, Ellie, Ellen, and anyone else who we now name out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, 
Hear our prayers. Amen. Gracious God, you continue to take care of us. You gave us the gift of creation and called all things and all people good. You gave us the gift of a Savior who has promised us life with you. You give us the gift of this simple meal to remind us of your presence in our lives and the promises you fulfill. At this table, we are one. At this table, we are with you. Thank you for the depths of our being for this supper. Thank you for the depths of our beings for your great love for us. Amen. At this kingdom table, we remember that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, gave thanks, and gave it to all to eat, saying, This is my body broken for you. Do this with a remembrance of me. At the same supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This is the blood of my new covenant given for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Come now, for all things are prepared for you.
invite you to pray the Lord's Prayer now since I sort of forgot that going around the table before. Any time is a good time for that prayer. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may this body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. May this feast that we have longed for give us courage and to go into the world to be evangelists through our words and actions. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And a hug to like you. Now go in peace to share the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.